There are countries ruled by Muslims. And they are doing extremely well. True of us. There are Muslim countries that even Christians here are praying and going for a crusade to get visa to go there and live and work. So now Muslim, Muslim is no longer a problem. Muslim ticket is not a problem to you. You are in Nigeria, you are praying for God to grant you a miracle to get visa to go to a Muslim country, a country ruled, governed by Islamic laws. There are countries, if you are a Muslim in Nigeria and you think that Christians should not rule you, there are countries in the world ruled by what? Christians, since their foundation. And they are doing what? Extremely well. And you have Muslims who are running from Muslim control countries, going to such countries to do what? To end their living. And yet you don't have sense to think that this thing is not about religion. Or come even to Nigeria. Are there no states ruled by Christian Christians? I know it's a tough issue. Uh, but if we, don't, if we don't approach tough issues with tough logic, we'll just be victims of sentiment. Are there no states in Nigeria ruled by Christian Christians? How much better are they to the one ruled by Muslim Muslims and vice versa? I'm, talk, I'm, not, I'm asking those who make religion their problem. How much better are they? If you think you're a Muslim that you cannot vote another person who is not a Muslim or who is not from your region, ask yourself, your region has been producing presidents, Abi, for how long? How better is your region? than those that have not produced presidents. That's why I will not let anybody use religion, religion and tribe, to blind me. Nigerian problem is not religion. It's not religion, it's not tribe, it's structure. Why are people concerned about the, the religion of the person on this? It's not appointment. It's appointment now. Okay, so why do we still allow in Nigeria that a president can make rascally appointments in Nigeria. I have been crying about this. Why will a president come and appoint a junior person, um, chief of army staff or minister of um, defense? What happens to all the seniors in this? What happens to them? They must be what? Compulsorily what? Retired. If he loses election the next, four, the next four years, another president will come and almost do what? The same thing. Why are we allowing that kind of rascality in our constitution? Why can't it be that anybody who must be the inspector general of police, let it be constitutionally written that it is by certain criteria of merit so that if you become the IG of police from those internal mechanism of competence selection, if you become the IG of police, your tenure is five years. It doesn't matter who is president. You must be there. Or if you become the chief of army staff or the chief of air staff, through the military's own competent mechanism to make sure that people rise in rank according to their what? Competence, not their tribe, not their religion. So that when you are at the apex, you, are the chief, you have earned to be chief of army staff, you are there. It doesn't matter which president is there. He cannot change it. Because your loyalty is not to the president. Your loyalty is to what? To the country. These are the issues that they are trying to block us from seeing. And politicians will be the one always cashing out. And they will make us stay and be blinded by many of these sentiments, whether it's tribe. To watch full videos and get notifications for new ones, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. God bless you.